Hey everybody, it's Matt Bradwell from Uppercut Woodworks. Welcome to Wood Chat uh, for February 6, 2013. You can find me on the web at uppercutwoodworks.com or on Twitter at Uppercut Wood. Uh, tonight's topic we're going to be talking about uh, Get Woodworking Week. Oh, and our special guest has arrived. I just wanted to mention him on Twitter and he magically appeared. <coughs> Uh, you invoked the spirit. That's all that happened. Yes, I did. I invoked the spirit of good working weeks past. With me tonight, of course, is Chris Wong. Say hey, Chris. Hello, everybody. Uh, Chris Wong here of Flare Woodworks. You can find me at uh, flarewoodworks.com and follow me on Twitter at Flare Woodworks. And our special guest is... He's special, all right. Yes. It's good to be special every so often. Chris looks frozen. He just popped out of the. He just popped out of the hangout because. Well, man, if it's just you and me, I mean, what are we gonna do? Awesome, and a Macintosh is awesome. Uh, it's what's it's good for everybody. How's it going, man? What's good, how are you? Out there? Doing. Oh my God, I've been so busy this week. It's been unreal. I was at work last night till six in the morning. You know what? I read something about breakfast for dinner or something like that. Yeah. That was that was kind of exciting. See these dark circles right here. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, that was good. That one right there, yeah. Okay, I got you. <laughs> anyway, introduce yourself, bud. Hey, everybody. I'm Tom Iavino from Tom'sWorkbench.com, and this is a really special week um, for the Tom's Workbench uh, blog because <clears throat> it's Get Woodworking Week, and none of this is possible without the help of everybody in the woodworking community. So, uh, so really, I just want to I want to thank everybody who's been out there participating, sending in articles, um, getting people off their behinds, and getting them out to a shop. Just give me a shot. Get woodworking. Go go build something. Yeah, seriously, and you know, I think the most amazing thing about about woodworking is people are terrified of starting because yeah. they can't build something like um, like Sam Maloof could right off the bat, or they couldn't yeah. build uh, something like you know Frank Klaus or something right off the bat. Well, what do you think they started with? <laughs> yeah, they weren't building like that when they started. Yeah, yeah, of course not. You know, the and, hardest part the hardest part for me that with any oh, hold on for one second. But um, the hardest part for me with it, for any project is actually just getting started at the beginning of every day. Um, but that's true with that's true with everything I do. Is just once I get started, I I crank usually pretty good. But man, sometimes getting started is just sometimes easier to take a nap, you know. And I need is, one. Is, right it, now. <laughs> is it the start of every session in the shop that's hard for you, or the start of a project? Um, it's usually the start of a project, and then once I get moving, right. I don't want to stop, and then the next day, I just want to get right back out there. Um, yeah. Well, I, I find that what the first stage of the project is cutting out components, and you have to be very careful to get the right, choose the right boards and cut out the right pieces in the right places. Yeah. And that takes a lot of planning and a lot of, uh, it, it's a slow process. Yeah. Sorry about that, Vanessa. And once Everybody, you get that, then it kind of picks up steam. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind that. Go I ahead, think. Tom. I think what I mind is the um, that that part of the woodworking that I call the woodworking square dance, where I have to pull my wife's car out of the garage. I have to move some of the kids' stuff. Uh -huh. I have to spread out the tools, um, yeah. and and I have to um, clean up my previous messes. And then when I move from operation to operation, sometimes I have to move everything around again. And that just is, is so frustrating. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just really don't want to sometimes deal with it. So, Who can blame you? I mean, it's one of those things where you um, it's got to be convenient for you to do it. So, uh, you know, the, but again, until you really get deep into the craft, you don't have that dedicated space. Yeah. So it's the kind of thing we have to kind of work around at first. Yeah. And so I've done some incremental improvement over the years that have made it better, but there's still so much more I could do to make my, my space so so much more efficient. So, um, so Tom, question for you. So what are some of your favorite posts so far about Get, work, get Woodworking Week? I mean, there's some, there, have been some, there have been some real humdingers out there, um, just some really just a lot of people sharing their first experiences of tomorrow. Carrie Holtman's going to have a great post about her first few projects, and believe me, some of those are just hideous. Uh, but again, you look at the work she does today, and then you look at where she was, and you realize yeah. that practice, just like everything else, practice and, and dedication and determination and just stick to really makes her work that much better. 
Yeah. So um, you know, so so it's it doesn't come overnight. But it's funny because earlier tonight I was coaching my son's basketball team, and the kids there they're 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 still learning the game. So there were a lot of things that you know you'd sit there and you'd freak out if you were watching an NBA game. And you saw the kids yeah. do, but as the kids are learning, they're getting better at the game, and that's really what it is. Nobody starts out like Michael Jordan. Nobody yeah. does. You work your way to that. So yeah. you know that's that's what you want to do. And the, the smoother that Carrie's working on, her hand-carved smoother. I mean... It, it's sick. <laughs> it is. It's ridiculous. Um, it, it looks like um, it looks like it could be in the Sindelar Tool Museum. You know, it, yeah. it, it, it's, it, you look at the quality of her work, and you just begin to realize that there are people who are... Um, you know, so much, so much better. Have so many different expert areas of expertise that you want to, you know, it's impossible to master all of them. Yeah. Um, but but when you when you see somebody who focuses on that carving or somebody who focuses on turning or bandsaw boxes or whatever, yeah. wow! I mean, they're spectacular. Yeah, I saw Mary mm -hmm. May at uh, Woodworking in America, mm -hmm. and she carves, and it, and it looks like she's carving like a big slab of semi-firm butter because it just it just the wood just curls off which is just it was just it's just ridiculous so the right tool the right technique yeah yeah and the right sharpening <laughs> <clears throat> exactly for all, all the way around from how sharp you make it to how you use the tool and that's you know that yeah. that comes with practice yeah well that's good so how many years in a row now is this for get whatever week is this this is, this this is just the year second year and, and, and second year I mean, it's, it's amazing because this year we, we had a lot of participation from uh, from Wood Magazine, Popular Woodworking Magazine, and Fine Woodworking Magazine. They've all come on board to support this, which is just unbelievable. When you think about, you know, you've got competitors who are all in pulling together for this one event. I mean, yeah. that that's pretty impressive when you think. Yeah. About well, hopefully they realize that it's all about making future subscribers for them, right? No, without a doubt. I mean, where where is where are they going to come from? Where else are they going to come from? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the topics I wanted to talk about tonight, um, as we monitor the uh, chat room, is um, something that I do uh, typically around Get Woodworking Week. I'll be doing it this weekend. Um, I was going to do it last weekend, but the ki the uh, wife and daughter were skiing. And I do some woodworking with my daughter Hayden, who will be six in March. And um, great last age. Year I did that video where we made a little uh, bug barn. Mm -hmm. Um. But I wanted to share some tips um, with some people around woodworking with kids because I really think it's I really think it's important to get kids um, interested in woodworking, especially with the fact that schools aren't teaching it as much as they used to. Exactly. And it seems to actually even be diminishing in importance um, with some of the scouting organizations. Um, they're, they're changing some of their woodworking badges in for Twitter badges, or you know, can you? you know, play a video game badge or something. I don't know. Um, all right, so here we go. So first tip is um, probably not a good idea to do a lot of power tool woodworking with kids, uh, depending on their age. And probably a good idea not even to have the blades raised on your table saw or your, or your tools plugged in, because um, if they go poking around, they might, they might accidentally turn something on. So... Typically, I don't have Hayden out into the shop until the power tools are unplugged and the blades are <coughs> put away and the bits are put away. And then the other thing that I do is I make sure that um, I do the same thing with any chemicals I might have in the shop. Alcohol, mm -hmm. mineral spirits, glue, shellac, anything like that. Anything that they might pick up and um, you know want to try and apply because maybe they've seen me apply a finish. Um, or they might think it's water. I mean, I keep my... Um, I keep my mineral spirits and my alcohol in those clear dispenser bottles that have a little um, dispenser tip. It's almost like a glue bottle, mm -hmm. and I don't want them thinking it's a drinking 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 bottle. Not can, I, can I interrupt for a minute? Yeah. Um, Jim Ashley and Tool Tutor on Twitter are saying that they don't have video, and I'm trying to confirm that the video is up on your page, and I'm not seeing it right now. Is it working for anybody else? Tell them to refresh. They need to refresh the page because I know it's there. I just checked it. Okay. Um, I'll send a link. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm actually watching it right now. On mute. 
So Google Plus is actually working this week. Unbelievable. Which is um, amazing. Yeah. That's one week in a row. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one week in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll make it to sixty minutes in a row. <laughs> there's a possibility. Yeah, there's a possibility. Um oh. what's that, Chris? I've I've been kicked out twice. I don't know. I, I'm sure you guys saw that. Yeah, I just blame Canadian Internet Access. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I stopped pedaling that, that. I stopped turning the, the, the pedals and, yeah, stopped. Okay. <laughs> Not enough Molson. Yeah, no, sure, yeah. Metric, it. It's metric Ethernet. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so when Hayden's out there, we usually focus on um, hand tools, obviously. Mm -hmm. And she actually has her own little toolbox, not of plastic tools, um, I actually went to like Ace Hardware and got her a little small hammer, a little small tape, and all that stuff, and a little um, tool pouch she can wear around her waist. Then the other thing is, go in there with the right mindset if you're going to woodwork with a kid. Don't actually think that you're going to get a real project done, depending on their age. You're likely just going to kind of fart around, um, but you can introduce them to some basic skills like uh, turning a screw or putting a nut on a bolt pounding a nail, sanding with the grain, things like that. You know, go ahead, Tom. again, you know, we go back to, you know, the fact that I was coaching basketball earlier. I mean, just yeah. teaching the kids how to dribble um, yeah. was, is critical to the game. Teaching kids how to pass, how to defend. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you're not going to teach them how to, you know, a complex motion offense or anything, but you're going to give them the basics, and that's really where everything begins. Yeah, you know, Once and you that's those actually, fundamentals, you're golden. Yeah, the fundamentals, that, that's actually a really good point that, that I'm glad you brought it up because I hadn't thought about, but um, all of those skills are something that Maloof used, mm -hmm. right? Or that any of the top woodworkers use. They all they all have to know know how to do these things. And you bring up sports, and the, uh, my analogy is I was an offensive lineman, and we used to always get screamed at. If you can't block, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. You can't run the ball. You can't throw the ball. You can't do. If you can't block, you can't do anything. And that's a very basic skill. So, um, so it's early. Yeah, it starts very early, and you got to get into the habit. So Hayden makes a lot of projects that aren't actually anything. It might be two boards screwed together with a bunch of nails that she's practiced to hammer or where she's sanded the heck out of something, but she has a ton of fun out there. And it's okay to go in there with the attitude of, we're not actually going to complete a project. Um, we're just – and a lot of times we'll be out there just cleaning up and helping her – Every once in a while, do her thing. So, um, ultimately, ultimately, you want to do two things. You want yeah. to give them the essentials. You want to give them those basic um, fundamentals of woodworking. Yeah. But also, you want to make it a pleasant experience. Um, when my two boys were little, we used to uh, we used to uh, vacuum yeah. the shop, yeah. and they loved the dust collector with the port, and they'd go around and take up all the dust. We didn't accomplish anything, but they loved the shop, which is really critical. They they began to began to like it, and that's. Where it all begins. You like working out in the shop with me, right? Are you being shy? You like working in the shop? Show him your monkey. Can I show him your monkey? Give me a monkey. Tom, here's our shop monkey. <laughs> you want to see another monkey, Hayden? Let's look at Tom's monkey. <laughs> That's Iggy. That's Izzy. Iggy. <laughs> Iggy, sorry. Well, she got shy, but... Um, Sorry, she distracted me, Tom. I missed your points. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll go over it. It's I, think good. Your, I think your points were teach them the basics and teach them how to teach them to enjoy it. Exactly, and and yeah. once they once they associate the shop with something that's positive, then they'll want to spend more time. They'll have better memories about it, which means eventually yeah. they want to try it themselves. Yeah, I think the other thing that's important is um, set them set them up to do something that gives them a sense of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And then they'll want that again, and they'll be willing to work hard, a little bit harder for it each time, and that's how they'll pro that's how they'll actually progress. They'll want to go from, and they'll want to know, well, how do I do this, and how do I do this, and how do I do this? So, um, so it works. You know, it, it works pretty good. And I'll tell you the funny thing is, if you go into Lowe's, I believe they they partner with the Boy Scouts um, or the Cum Scouts, you can buy a uh, a Pinewood Derby car kit. Yeah just off the shelf, and yeah. it doesn't matter if your kid's older or younger or 
you know, a girl because she's in the in the brownies instead of the Cub Scouts. You yeah. can actually build one yourselves, and that you know that's where a lot of us got our start. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and you can do that. You can build a Pine Derby car even if you're not in the Scouts, and you you don't need a Pine Derby track. Mm -hmm. Right, you just build they roll smooth build anyway. Um, so let's see. So the other thing I do is I, I I let her work at the bench with me, and to do that I have a stool. Mm -hmm. um, that she can stand on, and she knows which corner is hers, and she can set her toolbox there, and she, she's at the same height, she's working on the bench, and that way she gets to see um, uh, proper work pulled down, and, and you can see the device and things, and that, so it's, it makes it real for her when she has real tools, and she's really at the bench, and she's using real wood, and... Um, to the, to her that makes it more authentic, and she feels like she's really doing woodworking, not doing clay woodworking at a plastic bench with plastic tools and and things like that. So, but let but let's not forget the most important thing. She's there with her dad. Yeah, I mean, it's just, she has a blast out there. I at first I thought she would be able to hang out there for ten minutes and then get bored. Mm -hmm. She'll spend hours out there, hours, which is which is fun. But she really doesn't like it when the dust collector turns on or the air compressor turns on or anything. So, like I said earlier, turn that stuff off. So, um, and then I think the last last piece of advice I would give is, um, like like I said, you don't have to pick a real project. But if you do pick a project, pick something that's small that you can do fast where they can they can finish it. So, the bug um, the bug barn that we built last year was a kit. All the holes were pre-drilled. All the power cuts were, were um, all the saw cuts were pre-done. So we got to move through it pretty quick, and there was no nothing I had to go fix. Um, but one of the other things we did that was pretty cool is I just took a bunch of scraps and cut them all square. So it was literally like I just turned my scra my scraps into blocks, and then um, with her, we just glued a bunch of them together with hot glue. Mm -hmm. Because the hot glue was, you know, right away. And if she wanted to redo it, we could pull it apart, scrape off the glue, and go again. Mm -hmm. And so I had to be careful with the hot glue, but she made, like, a little play set for her Barbies with the slide and everything. And every once in a while she'd say, go cut this thing, and I'd cut it by hand. And So lots of ways to introduce kids into it and, and help them be successful. And it can be really, really fun. And... You can teach him even how to sweep your shop and put your tools away. So, mm -hmm. well, I mean, it's it, it's like well, it's like with anything else. You take it out, you use it, you put it away. So it's Barbies or it's Legos or whatever. Yeah. They they take it out, they use it, then they put it away. It teaches yeah. them respect for what you've got as well, because you know if you if you abuse something, you don't have it at the end. Yeah. So if you have a little saw that's set aside, make sure you put the saw away properly, so you can have it for the next time you go to build, and it works better. Yeah. Yeah. So that's part of the lesson as well. Yeah. So Tom, you've done some volunteering with. Um, I think it was the was it the Boy Scouts that you went and you did a, a a class on a while ago when you described wood. It was actually in in my both of my son's schools for the Great American Teaching, which took place in November, um, and I was able to go into both schools and talk to both kids' classes um, about woodworking, just showing them some of the tools. Um, different kinds of wood, different techniques, different joinery, and the yeah. kids were fascinated because they'd never seen anything like that. Yeah, I mean, There's everybody goes in. They, place. You don't, you don't see these things. You don't see hand saws. You don't see hand planes. You just yeah. go and the furniture comes in a box and it's an Allen wrench that puts it together. Yeah. So uh, for them to see and to, and to be able to, you know, to be able to see what what the tools can do, what they look like, how they're handled, I mean, that was yeah. really a big deal for these kids. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Have you fo have you followed up with any of the dads or any of the any of the kids bugging their dads to get them in the shop? You know, it's funny because one of the teachers at uh, my my oldest son's former middle school, where he now is in high school, he um he's got a program at his school where he teaches technology through woodworking, so engineering, math, you know, all kinds of yeah. all kinds of applications. And um, I've worked very extensively with him, trying to get some money brought into a school, trying to get some additional wood brought into the school so they can build more stuff. It's it's worked pretty well, so I just hope that it continues. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Chris, you wanna, <laughs> I know you've been typing a lot, trying to keep up with me. And I, I guess I'm talking fast. 
<laughs> um, well, yeah. you got thoughts on the topic? Woodworking with kids? No, no, I don't. No? Okay. <laughs> Have you seen um, any um, dads bring their kids into the store? Um, not, not, not much. No. Um, I guess I could try and remember some of my childhood. Uh, um, I, I guess some of the first projects I did, um, I, I built probably one or two birdhouses. Yeah. Um, but I remember doing a lot of those um, balsa wood models. Oh yeah, I forgot about balsa wood. And Chris is gone. No, we lost we again. him out. So I was going to ask him if his store has classes. I think they do, and if they ever see. Um, De uh, parents with their kids. So, you know, the more the more I see about kids out there in the shop, the more the more I really appreciate. You know that that people are taking the time to be there with their kids, and you know, the, you know, you always want to encourage that. Um, I have an actual, uh, I have a drawing this week for a couple of prizes, and one of the people who wrote in was twelve years old. Wow, that's awesome! And he just started woodworking with his dad, and he just wanted to write about it, and. How do you turn down something like that? I, mean, I have a feeling he's going to be one of our one of our finalists. But how do you turn down something like that? That's the most inspiring story. Kids is getting out there like, let's make it happen. Let's let's do it. And yeah. that's what Get Woodworking Week is all about. You you encourage people to just get out and do it. And yeah. you know, I mean, when when you think about all the things you can do to get people out there into the shop, or you can just try their hand at it. You yeah. Know, if they don't like it, they don't like it, but they tried it. Yeah. I mean, that, that's really the critical point right there. Yeah. There's that um, woodworking blogger from Nova Scotia. Oh, what is that? Uh, I don't know how old he is. He does projects with his dad. Have you seen those videos? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, um, Michael and Matthew. Um, what's the last name? Um, no. Chris is gone. He's got to get in. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you see these, you see these younger uh, woodworkers come along, and and they really just, you know, the way they take to it. Yeah. And you know, it, it just really it's inspiring. I mean, you know, I I got into it when I was in my late twenties, early thirties, and to see a kid at like fifteen, sixteen years old just really start to build. Yeah. And that's just wow. You know, I mean, if I had a fifteen year head start on where I am now, I'd be much better than what I am now. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, that was uh, Michael and Matthew Agate, by the way. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to find that link. Did you find a link to it? Um, the Newfoundland Woodworker dot com, I think. Oh, I said Nova Scotia. Yeah. I was. That's why I couldn't find it. Um, it seems whenever I talk, I get kicked out, so I'm going to try and not talk too much. It seems to be working okay now. So far, so good. Uh, right now. Okay. You know, it, it, I don't, you know, it, it's funny, Matt. We're, we're talking about your daughter as a woodworker. It, it, I don't know if you're, anybody read my article today. It was about women in woodworking, <laughs> and um, there was an interesting point about you know, if more than half the population in the United States is female, yet when you go someplace, you very rarely see female woodworkers. I mean, it's more of an oddity in many places. Um, yeah. You know, and you gotta wonder. I mean, was this something that they were discouraged from doing, or so? The, the idea is to kind of you know, get the women in your life involved in woodworking, and give them a shot at it, see if they like it. They might take to it. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, maybe we maybe we've only progressed halfway through the craft. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, there's a whole other half the population that I don't think yeah. is fully represented. So yeah, a completely different perspective is missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I I think that um, I think that recent changes in popular woodworking magazine might help that. I can we can only hope. I mean, Megan, right. you know, definitely a strong role model and just a really talented woodworker and just somebody who's very personable. So yeah, you know, she can reach out to people like you know, in her position, she has the ability to reach out to a lot of people to to yeah. bring them in. So male and yeah. female. Yeah, I mean, I think. Um, one of the best woodworkers I I know is Carrie, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the best carvers maybe on the planet is Mary May. 
Right. And so. um, there's another woman who inspired me. Uh, her name's Gail O'Rourke. She's a woodworker up in Massachusetts. And if she hadn't invited me to this woodworking school in Indiana, I don't think I'd be blogging today. Really? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, G Gail is just hometown woodworking, and she's just just immensely talented. And um, just 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 she can look at wood and you know, read the green, and she can do all that stuff. And the joinery is always airtight. You're like, wow. Yeah. I mean, what they hope to be hope to be that good one day. Yeah, I remember reading uh, that article you posted on your blog about the people mm -hmm. who inspired you. That was a good series, Tom. I like that. Well, thanks. Yeah, it was uh, it was important for me to get out. You know, a couple of thanks to some people who were really there from the beginning with the blog and 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 Carrie and Megan. And Gail, all three of them are on the, on that series. So you know, really being able to reach out to the female sex and just say, look, you know, if you're talented, bring it. You know, give it a try. You might love it. So, <clears throat> have you got any comments on the article? Any ideas why, if, if there's a secret society of female woodworkers that we don't know about, or? I shared the article with uh, Megan, with with Megan Gale and, and Carrie before I posted it, and um, there were there were some discussions, some interesting discussion about you know the way women learn versus the way men learn, and you know it, it's 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 a very intimidating thing to have somebody walk in and go, oh yeah, this is how it's done, do it my way or else, and that seems to be a very male type mindset. Inflexible, like, very inflexible. This is this is the way it's done. Step one, step two, step three. If you can't do it, then you can't do it. Whereas female. Uh, teachers tend to be more inclusive. Okay, you're getting this, but here's what you need to improve, and, and being able to pull people in that way. Um, so, so for a lot of women who are starting out, if they go take classes with men, they tend to be a little bit more intimidated, or uh, you know, it, it's not the teaching style that works with them. So they may get turned off completely to the craft, which is a shame because there's lots of ways to woodwork. There is no one proper way to do it. As yeah, as the I mean, and the, the yeah. whole there's one way to yeah. do things is so is so ridiculous. I mean, pins first versus tails first. You know, are you gonna are you gonna chop chop out the waist or saw out the waist? There's a, I mean, there's, there's so many different ways to do it. And you let's talk let's talk about let's talk about the most elemental joint in woodworking, mortise and tenon. How many different ways can you cut a mortise? Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. like five dozen, six Half. dozen ways to do it. So saying that there's one way and being inflexible about it is is, is pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know that, and that's the key. I think you know that there, there's a difference in the way women learn versus men. I, I think there's a, and hopefully you know now that the internet's out there and people are starting to get into it, um, you know it's a little bit more approachable mm -hmm. than trying to go and just learn from an instructor who's trying to teach you how to do it. You know maybe there's a lot more different ways to do it, and people can take the parts that work for them and afford that. Yeah. What do we do about shop class in high school? It's not coming back the way it used to be. Um, Is it coming back at all? There are places where, again, with STEM, with science, technology, engineering, and math, where yeah. it's being used that way. And I think as we move ahead, the only way to get woodworking back in the schools is to have it tie into that, the STEM classes. Okay. Uh, beyond that, I don't see it coming back the way it used to be because, unfortunately, with all the states gearing now towards college and testing, and you know, yeah. you've got to get so many people into graduation, so many people into college. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see the vocations pushed as hard. We're, we're going to have a, we're going to have a nation of highly educated people who know how to sit at desks. We have, have to pay people to fix their cars, pay people to make their furniture, pay people to fix their leaky sink. I, you know, I, I, I think about, you know, like, well, I did a tiling job in our bathroom over the summer, and I didn't know how to do it, but because I could woodwork, I know I can understand how to perform a manual task. So by reading the guides and reading the instructions, I was able to get it to where it came out nice. I don't think I would have had the confidence if I couldn't build a larger project in wood to go yeah. and tackle it. Teaches you a lot. Yeah, it does. Um, so Chris, I know that you don't want to talk because you think you're going to get booted, but um, no problem. Uh, but um, Fong, uh, tool tutor, was mentioning that you know wished I had a woodworking role model growing up. Who was yours, Chris? Mm -hmm. um, probably probably my uncle. Um, he was 
he was still is a handy guy. He's got. When I grew up, I thought he had every single tool that there was to own, which is um, fairly fairly close, fairly accurate. And then uh, he helped me build some big projects and introduced me to different mechanic mechanical tasks, um, from woodworking to carpentry to a um, bit of auto mechanics. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of the hands-on. I was able to get the experience and the guidance uh, to to do those things successfully. Mm -hmm. And he 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 knew what he was doing, so it was a simple simple task for him. And I got the same success that he he would have because he was there to help me. That's cool. I think I think that helps a lot of people who are. Um Reluctant to get started, mm -hmm. if, especially if they're going to go uh, do it alone, right? But if they have somebody there to guide them and help them, they'll keep going. It is tough to do it all by yourself. I mean, it is tough. I mean, it, without the internet coming in as as big as it has with woodworking, I don't think I'd be anywhere near I am where I am now as a, as a woodworker. Uh, just to be able to um, to be able to go out and read what you need and to have people you know do videos and show you the proper way to do things. It just it's made a world of difference because I can't afford to go to a woodworking school every weekend yeah. or tell them to try something new. You know, it's, it's yeah. you can't do it, but you can go online and, and yeah. you can see some of the lessons and practice things. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Van Vrede just made a really good point in the um, in the chat room. He says he goes to his shop every day, one hour before work and one hour after work, and he only missed three days last week, last year, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and his anniversary. And I think for people who are familiar with Wood Chat and Brian's work, it's amazing, right? And so mm -hmm. he's getting yeah. the reps in and getting and <clears throat> and he's not um, leaving um, large blocks of time between mm -hmm. his shop time. And I think those large blocks of time, if you don't get out in the shop, um, can really make your skills rust and deteriorate. Yeah. And if I can go back to another sports analogy, even yeah. people like Michael Jordan at the height of their career still went out and practiced. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the people who decide, I'm not going to practice, Allen Iverson, practice? You're talking yeah. about practice? They don't get to that level. They don't get to that level of success. Yeah. Um, they may do well. They may have a talent. But until you practice that, until you get so familiar that it's second nature, it's not coming. Yeah. So, I mean, just – and it doesn't have to be anything big. I heard of somebody who was doing a jewelry box a month Yeah. as, as, as a project. Yeah. And every month they built a new jewelry box, a little box. It could be anything. It could be a recipe card holder or whatever. Yeah. As long as you go out there and you set a goal, let me, once a month I'm going to build a small little project, not a lot of material, but a lot of technique. Yes. And <laughs> know how to begin it from start to end and try different joinery methods and techniques. Yep. And that, 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 that speaks volumes to your dedication to the craft. Yeah. And it will show in how your final project comes out in other parts yep. and other projects. So you bring a good point up. Uh, which is um, how do you start woodworking, especially if you're somebody that doesn't have the time and you're not going to go off and build a gigantic project in two hour chunks every week, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the last large project I did was May last year. And have you built small projects? Yeah, so my, my, um, my 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 day job got really busy and I started to really miss woodworking and so I made a list of projects that I wanted to do and I just started knocking out little small ones and over Christmas break I made a marking gauge and I did a Ron Hawk uh, block plane kit and they were both things that I could do easily in a short day but I actually got to go out there and do all the different steps and finish a project and it just it just felt so much better so you know, to get woodworking, you don't need to say you're going to go build a a, um, a Bombay, mm -hmm. right? Just go off and go off and build some small things and finish. And and the other thing is that when you're learning, if you build something small and you screw it up, it's Less really waste. not a lot of time and a lot of materials you've wasted. Um, I like I, I had so much fun building that marking gauge. I might go out and build like a hundred more. I ordered a whole bunch of parts, a whole bunch of the threaded inserts and and stuff. Um, but it's you know I still got to practice all the techniques. You know, a really a really interesting way to go into woodworking and to um and to be able to knock things out quickly, with 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 there's a there's a big upfront investment in tools. But people who turn, I just sit in awe 
Yeah. You can go from a chunk of wood to a beautiful yeah. vase, a pen. Um, salt and pepper know, shakers. Salt and pepper in, in an afternoon. Yeah. And from, from rough wood to finished piece in an afternoon. And if you have that short attention span, if you're in the ADD theater, yeah. um, the turning is like right up your alley. Yeah. So I mean, it, there's there's something for everybody in woodworking, and you know, I think you think of the like you said, like the giant, you know, Chippendale High boy. You want to build? It doesn't have to be that. It could be anything. Yeah. Well, well, there's a lot of projects that can be done in an afternoon or one day at least. Um, mm -hmm. So you could do a simple marking gauge, or um, I started building a bow saw yesterday, and I'm almost done. I probably could have finished it. But and I the other fire power tools at four in the morning. <laughs> The, the crazy thing is you, you can get out there and, like, you know, say you build these little boxes, these little recipe card boxes or whatever. I mean, birthdays come all year. Graduations come all year. The holidays come at the end of every year. That's a good point. You know, you, you, you can sit there and, like, once a month build something small, and then by the time December rolls around, you wrap it up and put a bow on it, and it's good yeah. to go to everybody. Um, you know, I mean, if you've got, you know, weddings coming up, uh, you know, we're coming into the, you know, when it gets to June, you're in wedding season. You know, picture frames, um, little keepsake boxes. These are the kinds of things that, again, minimal of material. You can go to some hardwood store, hardwood uh, dealer, and look in their offcuts bin, and they may yeah. give you the wood, and you can yeah. knock out the pieces from that. Yeah. So I mean, it's no. We're not talking about a massive investment in, in tooling, in wood, in education. Yeah. It's just doing, and that is the keys to get your butt off the sofa. Yeah, and out in the shop, You're not, go to some place where you can work. You know, it's, it's interesting you brought up turning because that's that's the that's probably the next thing I want to get into. Mm -hmm. So I took the turning class that the Easy Wood Tool guys did at Woodworking America, mm -hmm. and while teaching the class and introducing the topic, he made a child's stool that he turned, like in an hour, while taking the breaks to explain things. And it was great. I mean, it was it was it was awesome. And he and he didn't have twenty lathe tools, right? Mm -hmm. He had three, three of the easy wood tools, the carbide tip things. And, and the he lathe. turned out a great little stool. And a lathe, and that's it. And a lathe. And, yeah. You know, when when you get to that point, you know, you know, it, it, it's anybody who thinks they need to get a full fledged, you know, paramedic two thousand cabinet saw, and yeah. you know, hey. You can do it with a lot less. Yeah. And you can be, you can turn on some really awesome pieces. My first table saw was that little portable uh, DeWalt, the job site saw. Mm -hmm. That was an awesome saw. Little, but it was an awesome saw. And I built, a lot of, I built a lot of stuff with that saw. Mm -hmm. um, it had a very accurate fence. It didn't have the strongest motor, but I wasn't cutting through, you know, 12 quarter stock. I was cutting through three quarter stock. So it was a great little, great little, um, Great little project. One of the things I want to um, recommend people do that's going to help them get out into the shop um, is get is getting organized. And so one of the things I did over break, I'll try and show this off, um, is I made a notebook, um, a three ring binder. And so what I have in here is here's an idea, here's a sketch that somebody did. I just slid it in here. Mm -hmm. In this pocket, I've got. Um, Pencils, erasers, a straight edge, things like that. Up here, I've got to-do lists, um, things that I know I'm going to need to buy, shop project, things like that. Hold on, we have a guest. She wants me to be quiet. Okay. <laughs> the morning before. Um, I've got some sketches. I've got a to-do list for the blog. Um, here's the thing of suppliers. Compton Lumber, here's my reseller permit when I go buy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's tons of stuff in here. There's a whole bunch more sketches. Right? And I like doing sketches on graph paper in a binder because I can move mm -hmm. them around. I can put all the things that are like each other near each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a whole bunch of plans and stuff that I just printed out from the Internet. Um, tons of them, actually. Um, a bunch of the Woodworking in America handouts that I want to make sure I, I read and review. Um, and then lots of lots of blank paper in the back, and so I actually carry this with me everywhere I go, mm -hmm. and um, it's got a lot of the, it's got a lot of the plans in it that I want to build, and it's got a lot of when I see a project that I want to build, I'll write it down, um, 
or take a picture of it on my phone. A couple of quick sketches, yeah. Yeah, and um, now when I want to go out and build something, or when I when I know that I'm going to get shop time and I'm not sure how I'm going to spend it, I take my binder out and I've got lists of stuff that I can do. Some of it fits into 15 minutes. Some of it might take four hours. So, um, having that having that to do list and that project list and all those sketches really mm -hmm. helps me do woodworking even when I'm not in the shop, sketching and, on the know, bus and things like that. And the other thing is, you know, being that we're also bloggers, we also have to keep thinking about material to put online. Yeah. And, you know, being able to, you know, make those notes and then be able to refer back to them so you can write an article. Yeah. I've got a story here, a quick story about this table. Mm -hmm. um, you guys were talking about quick uh, shop projects, things you can do that don't take a lot of time or materials. This project started with um, the idea of what happens if I connect two points along a, a straight piece of it was like a two by two or something. Mm -hmm. So I drew this geometric shape from uh, from one corner to the midpoint at the other end of the wood. And then I rotated the leg and I did the same thing four times. And then I connected the dots. I used a, a draw knife. Just sat at my bench and worked down to those lines. And what did I get? I got, I got these twisted legs. So that was the inspiration, just from drawing a couple lines and playing around, seeing what happens when you connect the dots. You know, I mean, some of the best ideas in the world come when you're sitting in the shower in the morning, yes. um, when you're eating gross, your food, gross, gross. when you're, well, you know, you got to clean, clean somehow, right? Um, when, you, when you're on the way to work or way home, um, you know, you're sitting in lunch break, you know, these things just start to play in your mind. The next thing you know, you've got, like, this I mean, this 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 table, which is just unbelievable to look at. I mean, you can't even picture, you know, even building this. But still, like you said, Chris, it's just a couple of drawings, a couple of lines, and next thing you know, you've got a project. Mm -hmm. It's that fooling around time that I allow myself that lets me advance in a creative way. You know, because woodworking, the, the most powerful you, the tool you have is right between your ears. <laughs> um, you know, the ability to, 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 to think about it in... in, in in your mind, conceive it in your mind, and then try to put it on the paper, and then eventually onto wood and make it happen. That that's really, you know, again, woodworking week challenges to think. Um, you know, think about what you want to do, what you want to build, what you want to see. Yeah, Chris, did we lose you? Um, I'm still yeah. here, but I, I can't. Get, I my I I think that once I put screen share on, I can't get screen share off. So I'll wait till you get kicked out, then you can see me again. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think it's uh, 3M that encourages their employees to take an hour out of each day just to fool around in the lab. Yeah. And I think that that's how the poster was created. The, those little sticky notes. Yep. Someone created an adhesive that stuck but didn't quite stick. Mm -hmm. So just out of fooling around, you get these things that every household has now. You know, time to stop and think, a time to, to, to reason. And, yeah. you know, the other thing about woodworking that's really big for me is, you know, during my day, I'm a, I am handle hurricane preparedness yep. here on the west coast of Florida. And during the day, I, I have to think about such heavy stuff like, you know, how many people would die if nobody evacuates from a certain area. Yeah. And, you know, how long will it take to get people out of, out of harm's way if a hurricane's coming? And it, it's very depressing when I can come home and I can disconnect totally. Um, go to the bench, um, build something, uh, design something. Uh, I'm my own boss. Nobody tells me what to do. Nobody tells me how to do it. Just do. Um, what a relief. What a release. You know, I'm just not sitting in front of the TV just having it bombard me. I'm actually doing something. I'm participating in something, which is completely different from what I do during the day, which for me, I need that escape time. Yeah. It's very similar for me. I work... Um I have about 70 employees, mm -hmm. and I work on software all day, and you can't hold it, right? Just so, no. Yeah, Jeez, I can't, I can't say, look, this is this thing I'm holding in my hand. It started as this chunk of nothingness, and now it's this cool thing. And so for me, working alone in the shop and actually creating something is... is and it also connects me to... When, when I would work, I feel connected to the people in my life that were, were my woodworking mentors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I remember what they taught me, and I can hear their voice in my head telling me to put the damn tool away or sweep up that mess or 
you know, uh, why did why didn't you why did you let that plane get a little bit of rust on it or whatever? And so mm. it's you know it's 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 nostalgic and it's uh, therapeutic and and I love the sense of completion too. So yeah, you, you, when it's done, it's done. Yeah, and yeah. you can walk away and say I'm proud of that. Yeah, yeah, it's got a gap. Yeah, this doesn't come out perfect, but you know what? You know, as, as Jim Heavey once told me. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> because the majority of people who look at your pieces aren't going to notice anything. It's yeah. like a, it's like a wedding. Yeah. It's just like a wedding, you know. Oh God, the wrong color tablecloth went out. Nobody's going to remember. Yeah. They're remember how the bridegroom, how the groom looked, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's very very true. Um, and it's funny, you know, usually what I think about is I think about the recipient of the project. Um, you know, recently I just finished a uh, hope chest for my niece who just turned 16. Yeah. And, um, you know, she had to come down from Maryland on a family vacation during the holidays. And I, I had this project done and it looked, it came out very good. It came out really, really good. And I just could not wait for her to walk in that shop and yeah. see it. I mean, it's just, you know, you're, 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 you're it, it was, it was like being Santa Claus. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I get to give the gift this time. And when you're working on it, you, know, you get frustrated with something. You think about, you know, how is this person going to receive this? Yeah. And wow, I mean, it just really connects you, like you said, with your four, with, with your ancestors, the people who, who led the way. It connects you with the people who you're building with, building for as well. So it, it's really a big deal for me. Yeah. When I, um, I think I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again because it uh, it, it did feel good. It's very similar to yours. When I built those mantles last Memorial Day and I installed them, mm -hmm. everything went so well, and they turned out so well, even though I had to bust my butt for three days straight to get them done because I miscommunicated the deadline. Mm -hmm. I was in the zone when I was in the shop. Every, <laughs> every tool was where I needed it to be without even having to look, and everything went perfect. No tear-out, no splinters. grain was beautiful. Installation went perfect, and when I showed her the design decisions I made around the placement of some imperfections in the wood, mm -hmm. it looked like a face of an owl. She was blown away, absolutely blown away, and uh, and that felt that that felt really really great, right? Um, and you can get that building something for yourself too. You certainly can. And I can't tell you how many times I've been in the middle of a project working on a flat pieces and working on, um, you know, working on this piece, working on that piece. And it's like, yeah, okay, this is great. But then you put it together, and you're like, you're you're impressed yourself. Yeah. That you're able to get that far. It's like, wow. You know, I had no idea I could do that. Yeah. Getting that sense of comp of accomplishment in the shop is much more rewarding than watching reruns of Three's Company. <laughs> I think there are a lot of things in life more rewarding than that. <laughs> uh, so, and you know, we we talked about um, if for people who don't have a lot of time or are just getting started and, and should do small projects. Um, one of my favorite woodworkers over the last year has been Steve Ramsey. I mean, every genius. week, like clock, clockwork, he turns out projects that you could do in a weekend mm -hmm. and they're all really cool ideas um, and for people who think that you need to have Norm Abrams shop you don't and, you, and for people who think that you need all um, Lee Valley or Veritas or Festool you don't right? Steve's, no, got, he, Steve's got a very reasonable shop what I'd call a, a homeowner's shop um, but every week he turns out something that's cool and interesting and small enough that you could do, that a that a home worker could do it in a weekend. There's no, there's really no what it's all about. Yeah, and he shows you all the steps, and so it's just you know just get out there and get out there and do it. So the man borders on genius and insanity at the same time. Yes, <laughs> I was gonna say evil genius or, or or eccentric genius, but genius. His videos are insanity. Good. Yes, yeah. So, um, and I think the last last point I wanted to make was um, you can get your woodworking fix even when you're tired and it's unsafe for you to go in the shop by reading. Oh yeah. Or learning, or reading a blog videos, or whatever. Watch a video. 
read a book on I'm I'm currently reading this book here, The Old Way of Seeing, about architecture and design. Mm -hmm. And I I can't wait for maybe it's already out. Um Jim Tolpin's book uh, about design. I don't, I don't oh, think that's really, out yet. Don't think, yeah, I don't think it's out yet either. But um, like, I just, I can't wait to read it, right? Um, and yeah, it's not out yet. I don't see it on there. You know, it, it, it's it, what with me. You know, when I find, you know, I'm having terrible trouble in the shop, or if I find I've got a project I want to build, but I don't know how to do it. It's, it's for me, it's a voyage of discovery. It's it's it's. I want to start finding out how it's done. I want to see the best way to do it. I want to see several ways to do it. I want to make my own decision to do it. And um, when you you know when you when you're when you finally find it, it's it's that you know moment of accomplishment. You say, okay, I can tackle this now. Yeah. Um, and and again, big part of getting woodworking week is to share that knowledge, to take the knowledge from from you, Matt, and you, Chris, and me, Tom, and and put it out there. Everybody has a chance to get at it, and you know, if we can, you know, if we can energize some woodworkers. If we can energize some new woodworkers to come in and try their hand, I count it as a success. There's no magic metric I'm going to find. It's going to say we got 75 new woodworkers in the shop. It's yeah. going to be we have to put it out there. You have to put the invitation out. You have to set the table. You have to put a good piece of food on the table, and then invite them in. And if they eat, great. If they stay for a while, great. If they don't, at least they tried it. Yeah. Ultimately, that's what Get Woodworking Week's all about. Yeah. Sometimes it's fun to have somebody in the shop. I love having. Them, I used to love having my nephew in the shop. We'd go up to the lumber yard, go to the scrap bin, grab a bunch of the scrap cedar that they give you for free, mm -hmm. and and we'd go build four or five uh, birdhouses and give them out. You know. It sounds fun. like a great way to spend a day. Yeah, and he had he had he had some great memories from that. That he's he's always saying, "Hey, I'm going to be home for Christmas." He's in college now. I'll be home for Christmas. You want to build something? And I always tell him, "Yes." The first step is you have to draw me a design. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah, go draw something first. So. Well, Chris, you there? I'm still here. Yes. It's eight o'clock. I figured we'll see. I'm going to check the. Um, Twitter feed and see if there's any uh, questions we need to answer or anything like that. But other than that, I think it's probably time, yeah. time didn't, to wrap up. Didn't see any questions go by. Um, I guess the one thing that I would add is there is a lot of information available, but don't get too wrapped up in it where, where you're just reading and thinking about what the right way of doing it is because there are two, to, two dozen ways of cutting that mortise. Yeah, so go out there and just try it. Go and cut that mortise. Yeah, yeah. watch and, the video. Go do it. Yeah. Watch another mm -hmm. video. Go do it. Watch and a different that, video. Go and, do it. And the beauty about that, Chris, is if you try the one method and it doesn't work, yeah, find the next one and try it. Yeah, eventually yeah. find one that suits your style, you suits your tools you have in your arsenal. It'll eventually match up with exactly what you needed to do. Yep. And you know, when you, when you cut that mortise, it doesn't work. You'll know. Why it didn't work? Maybe you used the wrong materials, or your tools were dull, or mm -hmm. it just was too slow, or something. But you you'll learn from it. Or like me, you cut on the wrong side of the line. Yep. Who hasn't done it? Yeah. You know, Fong yeah. makes a good point. Tool Tutor makes a good point. You can use cheap wood. Mm -hmm. You can use an old two by four. You can use Home Depot pine. Doesn't yeah, poplar works fine. I mean, yeah. it's, it's 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 as long as it's as long as it's out there. You know, I've seen some really good pine projects, man. I've seen some really sweet looking pine projects too. Yeah. Todd in Montana wrote, um, "My grandkids spend more time in the shop than many." Yeah. <laughs> that was a good picture. Yeah, I think that's great. I've seen some of the pictures of the stuff that he's um, he's had kids build in his shop, so. Mm -hmm. You know, Andy Chidwick, another um, another big time advocate of getting kids in a shop. Um, you think about it, it, it's just it's just great to see. Yeah, it's good. Okay, well, we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, this was uh, Wood Chat on air for February 6, twenty thirteen. The subject today was Get Woodworking Week. Um, our guest today was Tom Iavino from Tom'sWorkbench dot com. Get out there and woodwork. Get out there and woodwork. Yeah, he started. Tom started Get Woodworking Week last week. Lots of bloggers are participating, magazines are participating, and the whole thing is just get out there and try stuff and learn new things and, and, and build your skills. So 
That's it for me. You guys want to say goodbye? Tom? Peace out, everybody. See you on the flip side. <laughs> Good night, everybody. You can't really see your face, but you can still hear you. Yeah. Chris said goodbye already. I am sorry. All right, everybody. We will see you next Wednesday for Wood Chat. Um, that'll be February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. So maybe between now and then you want to get out there and build a Valentine's Day gift. Remember, we start Correct, at 7 yeah. p.m. Pacific and 10 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday. Hashtags Wood Chat <laughs> on Twitter. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.